Hey, Sean. How are you? Hey, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. Thanks for jumping on. Lovely to see you. My pleasure, mate. Thank you for having me. No, you're welcome. Well, welcome to Member Spotlight. Let's crack on, eh? Straight into yeah, it. Thank you. Awesome. So, mate, I'm going to ask you, like I ask everyone, if a stranger stopped you on the street and asked you what you did for a living, what would you say? I would say that I'm a, a fitness business owner um, who is, well, whose main purpose is to motivate people, inspire people, and give them the tools for success, no matter what part of their life they need those tools for. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. And I've, I've seen you in action firsthand as I've gotten to know you over the last, well, it's been over 12 months now, isn't it? Even longer, probably more 18 yeah. months. Yeah, it was when, when you started Let It In. So that was when we uh, introduced ourselves to each other. Yeah. So yeah. whenever that started, that's, um, that's when we met. Yeah, I know. Was it the pilot course you jumped on all that time ago? That's right. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was. I still remember the first thing um, I had an interaction with you when I ordered the juggling balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, mate, my first question is, and I, I like to ask for the members, you know, with everyone listening as well, what, what led you to make the decision in the first place to, to join Let It In and give it a crack? Um, a few years ago, my best mate... Um, purchased uh, some meditation tracks for me for my birthday um, and I went and bought some headphones and, and I was getting into that but you know I was walking up to the hill and meditating but as, uh, as I was going through that process I was kind of leaving each meditation um, with a bit of a sense of being lost still, um, not really taking action on um, what I was experiencing throughout meditation and I guess I kind of felt like I was just doing it just for the sake of doing it okay. um, and, and I felt like I needed to be a part of a, a group uh, where I'd be held accountable, inspired um, and to be amongst people with similar intentions. Yeah, fair enough. And a question... I'm curious to know about, because I'm always interested to know people's perspectives around this as well, is what, what do you think was leading you to meditation in the first place? Like, and how has your relationship changed with meditation from when you first started to where you're at now with it? Uh, at first, um, my, my, my reason for meditating at first was to was really because I'd heard so much about meditation and, um, you know, I've always been looking to become a better person or to become more aware of my thoughts and to kind of master my thoughts yeah. um, or get on top of my thoughts and to, be, to, to maintain a positive mindset. Um, throughout, my, throughout my journey, uh, particularly, uh, particularly with, the, with the Let It In group and your meditations and Joe Dispenza's meditations and Petra's meditations, I've had a feeling of being an observer. I've, been, mm. I've, 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 I've now got the ability uh, to notice thoughts, not label them, not judge myself, but just to see a thought come in. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not perfect. There are times when thoughts can get the better of me, but most of the time I can sit back and see those thoughts like I'm a different person um, and recognize them for what they are. They're just thoughts. Um, so I guess that's that whole metacognition aspect that you teach in the course. Um, yeah. And that's been really powerful for me that I am, I'm not my thoughts. They are just thoughts and they come and they go. Um, and also uh, the feeling of being present. I mean, I just sat here for 10 minutes before you just uh, logged in and I just did your first ever meditation we did in the course, the 10 minute one, the morning meditation. And I was literally, I'm sitting in the middle of Darling Harvest, there's lots going on around me, but at one stage there, I just, I could just feel the wind on my face and I could just feel the feeling in my throat and I knew that I was just completely present. Um, I couldn't hear anything else around me um, and I knew that I was well and truly uh, in the moment. Yeah. And that, that's a special feeling. It is, it is. And especially one that if we're not familiar with it, we, we don't know where to go and navigate to, to get to the end result. Like you, you've. It's fair to say, I think, you like, over the period of time, you've had some shifts 
since you know over the time with let it in over the last 18 months you know you've been involved in the intention you left the group as well and then you came yes. back and um, yes I'm intrigued to know what your relationship has been with this work over that 18 months because I know it can get a little bit frustrating and we all have challenges but at the same time I find that um, the work is is where the work is at like even though you know sometimes we want our circumstances to change but the only thing we actually can navigate and control is the way we our relationship to circumstances and then the circumstances slowly start to change over time and I guess I only raise that because I think your interpretation and of the work has, has definitely changed from the moment you started to where you're at right now, 18 months later. So I don't know if there's a question in there, but can you explain that to me? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll start from before I joined the group. Um, I'm a business owner. I've always, and I'm, I'm a fitness business owner, so I'm always looking for self-improvement. Um, I've spent a lot of money over the years uh, on employing business coaches, uh, counsellors, um, uh, other sorts of coaches which have different labels. I'm not sure what their label is, but, you know, that, that come at a hefty price. One was three and a half grand a month. One was 250 bucks per session, working mm. with him once a week. Um, but going, coming into a group um, and paying 40 bucks a month, which is fantastic value to start off with, um, but the feeling that you get from working inside a group of people uh, that all have your best interests at heart and have similar challenges in their own lives, it's just a great start. Uh, you don't feel like you're um, expected to pay huge amounts of money uh, for a limited amount of time with somebody. I mean, you know, I was spending an hour on a phone call with a business coach. I was spending an hour face-to-face -face with another coach. I was spending an hour at a time with a counsellor. Uh, but having access to a group um, that are there for you 24-7, that you can reach out and ask a question, um, you know, that's, that's invaluable. It's, it's, you know, you're a part of a tribe. It's awesome. In fact, to the point where I went to rejoin a local gym recently that's 20 bucks a week, and they were contacting me to see if I would come back, and I said, no, I've, I've, I've joined this group, and this is what I need. It's a, it's a, it's a, a crew of people that I'm a part of now. Um, but over that time, you know, listening to other people's experiences, watching other people's journeys, uh, being involved with, you know, your loyal, your loyal crew like Rhoda and, and uh, Duncan and Annie, um, and Wendy, um, Belinda, all those people. I hope I haven't missed anybody, but, you know, all those people, um, it's... Um, that, that feeling you get, the feeling of loyalty, feeling like you're a part of something is so special. Um, and it just encourages you to do the work um, in your own time. There's no pressure. Uh, you, you jump on an intention if you can. Um, you jump on a meditation if you can. And the intention that we had not long ago where you held it and, you, and, it, was, and it was focused around me and it was to speak my truth. That was the... That was the message that I got mm. from that. Um, and, you know, the more, I, the more I reflect on that journey and the more I reflect on that intention, speaking your truth for me has been something that I haven't done throughout my life, the fear of criticism, the fear of rejection. Um, and whenever I do speak my truth, before I speak my truth, I do go back to that intention. Uh, and I only have positive results from that. I only have positive experiences uh, when you do speak your truth. So, I hope I'm not waffling here, but, um, you know, the, the meditation component of it um, is almost like the baseline. Totally. Um, and then thing, things like speaking your truth, things like being present, um, things like focusing on what's best for you and what do you truly want, um, is all a result of being a part of this group. And it takes, thank you for sharing that, Sean, I appreciate it. And it takes courage to do that because ultimately we, we, this work starts to reveal things within us. And I always look at it, there's a diamond within every single human being, you know, it's, it's the essence of our soul, it's who we really are. And, but we live and condition ourselves in such a way 
that we forget what that actually looks like or don't even know. And as we meditate, it starts to reveal these things within us. And like we said, even when we did the intention for you around speaking truth, because that was something I could deeply relate to in my own personal yes. life and realizing that I was a lover, not a fighter. And I used to um, hide away from confrontation, even though if it was the right thing to say and do at that point. And that's where mm. I think um, a lot of this work we start to do and reveal ourselves, but it all comes back to self-awareness, and that's why meditation is so powerful. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's like the, the, the dark night before the new dawn, like when we start to really confront these things, it can be actually scary at first, and we don't know how other people can respond and be and behave. And it's a process. Like, I know people come in to let it in thinking they're going to get a fix in two weeks or just start meditating and that's the end point and it's like no no yeah. no, no 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 that's just the beginning that's just the beginning mm. and um and why i always encourage people to you know actually communicate with each other and contribute and be part of a community sitting on the sidelines and not participating in any of this work and hoping changes change is going to occur it just doesn't happen and i'm speaking to everyone that's listening to this because i know a lot of people are listening to this not so much you sean but um you know, so what have you found starting to happen as you got closer to that discomfort and you actually then had the courage to start moving through it and honouring that? What is now the projection? What are you starting to see and notice the difference? Uh, I guess the first thing um, is with my relationships. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's when you start to speak your truth and be authentic in what you say to people, um, they respect that more. You, 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 you obtain more respect from people um, because you're not sitting on the fence. You, because you do come across as someone who sits on the fence when you don't speak your truth with the fear of upsetting someone, with the fear of being rejected. And the more that you can speak your truth authentically, the more I've found that people have responded to me uh, positively. Uh, not that I'm looking for them to be positive, uh, but they've, it's it's been a much more positive interaction with somebody. Um, not only with my relationships, but on the work front as well. Um, I'm at a point now in business um, where I need to make some decisions as to is what I'm doing uh, in, in that capacity, what's right for me? And is that my, is that my, my truth? Um, is it what I'm here to do? Um, so there are a few options that I'm looking at at the moment, um, moving forward, uh, which will be very challenging for me. And I know you've been down a very similar path, mm. uh, in your past. Um, so I may be reaching out to you privately, uh, for some advice on these ones, but it's, um, it's motivating. Um, and it's encouraging to know that I'm starting to address these things rather than just being a follower. Um, that's 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 yeah. all I can really say about it's, that. Yeah. It's it's you know I I when I hear you say that I get excited for you because because if it's scary and exciting then we know we're on the right path. I, yes. I, I just know that that's how it's always worked out for me. And you know whenever whatever it is we're actually moving towards, we, there's an element that we just have to trust as well. But when we keep coming back to heart when we keep coming back to that feeling where you know this is this is my compass it doesn't make sense but i'm going to start honoring it and it feels relieving it there's like there's less resistance believe it or not mm. when we start to fl follow that flow that's when we truly start to let it in you know and um when i when so when i hear you say things like that i know exactly where you're at because i'm I still have to face these things moving forward as this grows in this direction and working with more people and, and expanding. But at the same time, it's like, well, what's life all about, right? What are we doing it all mm. for in the first place? And when we get back to that, um, it's powerful. It's really mm. powerful. Mm. You know. It is, man. It is. And, and you know, I've got a family. Um, there's a family of four, two kids. One's at private school. Um, and so, you know, there are big bills that I still need to pay to be able to live. So that's a, it's a tough juggle when you've got a business that's producing revenue, that's paying you a salary, uh, to make changes in that regard and to, you know, 
possibly make changes down the track in that regard is very challenging as well when it starts to affect the people around you. Mm. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And I don't, I don't say this publicly, but I'm going to share it today with people just to give people an insight as well. But for me, from a business perspective and let it in, I'm actually like I'm 18 months in and let it in still isn't making profit yet. Like everything turns over from the software I run for what I charge, the amount of members, like it's a fine process in line. And it and it and I look at these things, but I'm driven by a bigger vision and a bigger future and I'm trying to help people along that path. So I still have to surrender and ignore all those things that are going on and responsibilities that I have and trust in my bigger mm. vision and continue to lead those steps forward. But I'm sure we all have our problems, we all have our circumstances, and we all have to deal with the relationship that we have in a very different way. And it all comes back to that, you know? I think mm. the, the last thing I'm gonna touch, touch on as well, Sean, is like where, with this work, where do you think it's gonna lead you? Because I know we were at the conversation jumped on there because I mentioned Sean you really need to come to a retreat you know you, you've already embedded fantastic relationships within the community because you've been active and proactive and being involved and, and allowed that to nurture and what I saw from the last retreat when people finally came together I could embody this work for three days um, mm. it's even more transformative because I appreciate the online stuff is almost a way of like it's the training wheels like it really is to then get to the point where um, there's even more to that, you know? Yes. Hmm. Well, where do you see yourself going with this work and, and hope to be even 12 months from now with it if you included this kind of work with it? What do you sort of see it as? I'm, I'm intrigued. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's still... As long as I've been in the group, it's still baby steps for me. Um, we've had a few conversations in the past. Um, with my schedule, it's very hard for me to meditate first thing in the morning every day. So I'm finding chunks of time throughout the day at the moment to sit down and to be present and to meditate, even sometimes before bed. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, sometimes I fall asleep during those meditations. Um, but baby steps for me moving forward um, and getting to a point where I'm able to sit down for longer periods of time um, or even more frequently throughout the day and just being able to center myself to become present um, and to meditate uh, and to find that to be more of a natural um, exercise for me uh, and moving forward really want to come to one of these retreats um, really want to make sure I invest time and money to come to one of these retreats because I see this as something as beneficial as a family holiday, as beneficial as going away with my closest friends for a weekend um, and I really want to put the time and the effort into that as well. Um, and then after that, I can actually see myself as using you as a, as a mentor and to um, encourage other people to be to to get involved in the work as well, uh, to share meditation with other people. Uh, in particular, like in the, in the community where I have my studio in Sydney's Northwest, um, you know, it's so foreign to people. I mean, you can Enough. probably remember when you came to the workshop, there were people sitting there going, what the, f what the hell is this? Um, I see you know, it in every cross, workshop, mate, cross. it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so it's very foreign to people and I, and, and, and I just wanna, I wanna share it with people. I want to add it as another um, string to my bow and uh, mm. to what I can offer people uh, in terms of my personal services as well. So, so, so my goal is to progress as an individual, to do the work, to learn the work, and then share the work. Yeah, and as I'm sure you you know, though people have to be ready to take the next step, and yeah. and any any form of action behind that action is an intention, and of course we know how powerful intention can be. From, from yes. this work as well, and and it's where where's that that intention lie at the end of the day, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, if 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 this um, this will probably become a podcast later down the line, and for anyone listening to this that is new to this work or is sitting on the fence, how would you describe it to someone? Just get started. Uh, like uh, uh, to describe uh, to describe the work is. 
I wouldn't say life changing straight away, but no. just like starting the work bit by bit, it's life changing bit by bit. It, 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 makes, it makes little changes to your life over time um, that you start to notice gradually. Um, and if you approach it in that way, it's not a, you know, you have to change your whole life at once. It's making little commitments over time and start to notice changes over time to your life, positive changes to your life. Yeah, beautiful. I often say it's like shining a torch in the shadows of yourself. And it can be a bit scary to look what's in there at first. But um, yes, the, the more we reveal them elements, the more we can let it go and move through it and, and, uh, and move on. You know, maybe before we wrap this call up, is there anything else you'd like to add to all the listeners? We've got, we got new people coming in, we've got regulars, and obviously we've got guys that are, um, have been doing the work a long time. What, what would your last words of wisdom be, mate? Just embrace the community. Get involved uh, in the lettering community. Be vulnerable. Um, be, there to, uh, be there for other people um, because it's truly a community. It's a team. It's a tribe. Um, and trust me, I've been involved with lots of communities over time. I've been involved with round tables. I've been involved with football teams, all of the above. Um, this is just a place where there's unconditional friendship, love and support. So make the most of it, hang in there. It's great value. Um, and even when you feel yourself struggling to do the work, just stay with the group um, make a comment on the, on the Facebook group. Um, you know, reach out to Guy on the, um, on the website um, because it's the most positive and friendly group I've been involved with my whole life. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate those kind words, mate. And, um, and I'll second that in, in the sense that I can only do, so, there's only one of me at the moment still with Let It In. You know, as the community grows and, and, you know, working and putting the content out and things. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we have to action it ourselves. That it has to be an implementation. I can't, nobody can do that except ourselves, whatever yes. that is. You know what I mean? And, mm. uh, and sometimes mm. we can get hard on ourselves for not implementing and getting caught up. But ultimately, yes. at the end of the day, when the pain is great enough and there's nowhere else to turn, we then turn to this work. And I'm like, don't wait, just start, trust me, because the, the, it reveals so much about ourselves that we never even knew was possible, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. And, 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 and you've got resources there. Um, easy to turn to resources on your website and in the group that you can download and save the, save the meditations on your, on your Apple iTunes account. They're there, so use them. Mm, yeah, well, Sean, beautiful. Thanks for coming on and, and sharing so honestly today, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, I've no doubt people will benefit from listening to that. Thanks, mate. And thanks for hanging in there with me as well. I appreciate it. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> thanks, mate. Awesome. Bye-bye. See you, mate. Bye.